America. I'm just a few hundred feet from ground zero where a group of Muslim terrorists crashed two planes into the World Trade Center, killing close to 3,000 people. Nine years later, two groups of Muslims, the Cordoba Initiative and the American Society for Muslim Advancement, are planning to build a massive 13-story mosque right here behind me. Now, understandably, many people here in the West are concerned that this isn't an attempt to honor the families of 9-11, as the Muslims here are claiming. Uh, instead, it may be an attempt to build a symbol of Islamic uh, victory. Now, I have the same concern, but mine is slightly different. My concern is based, for the most part, on a photograph I saw while I was still in college. When I was in college, my best friend was a Muslim named Nabil Qureshi. Nabil uh, showed me some photographs shortly after the September 11th attacks, and I found them uh, quite surprising. Muslims were passing these photographs around, and Nabil thought that they were absolutely hilarious. The first photograph was a picture of George W. Bush as a Muslim, and I have to admit, that one was actually pretty funny. George W. looked like he had uh, joined the Taliban. The second photograph wasn't so funny. It was a photoshopped picture of the Statue of Liberty covered in a full veil. Now, this one bothered me a little bit. It was the Statue of Liberty, a symbol of freedom and justice, covered by a full veil, a symbol of uh, oppression and Sharia law. Now, these two pictures actually work their way around the Internet, so lots of people are familiar with them. The third picture is the one that really disturbed me, however. It was a photoshopped picture of New York City covered in mosques and minarets. In the bottom corner, it said, New York City, 2006. The idea was that the terrorist attacks had cleared the ground for the construction of new mosques. Now, when I asked Nabil why he found this photograph so funny, he said, am I the only one who's dealing with this tragedy through humor? But that really didn't work. People who dealt with 9-11 through humor made fun of the terrorists. They didn't joke about uh, terrorist attacks clearing the way for a new Mecca. So this was when I first realized, this is when I realized for the first time that there are two forces at work within Western Muslims like Nabil. On the one hand, Nabil was born and raised in the United States. His father had been in the U.S. military. He loved America. But on the other hand, even though he came from the most peaceful sect of Islam, there was something in Nabil that allowed him to smile when there were terrorist attacks. Now, those of you who know personally, uh, who know Muslims close enough to where they can, they can tell you what they really think, you know this is actually quite common. Good citizens in public, not so good citizens in private. Interestingly, this dual Muslim nature is advocated in the Quran. If you turn to Surah 3, verse 28, you'll see that the Quran says, let not the believers take disbelievers as their friends in preference to believers. Whoso doeth that hath no connection with Allah, unless it be that ye but guard yourselves against them, taking, as it were, security. So if you're a Muslim, you're not supposed to be friends with unbelievers, unless it's to protect yourself. What this means is that if Muslims feel threatened by a stronger adversary, say the United States of America, they can pretend to be friendly in order to protect themselves, in order to guard themselves against these unbelievers. The greatest Islamic commentator of all time, Ibn Kathir, comments on Surah 328, and he says that when Muslims are outnumbered by a stronger adversary, believers are allowed to show friendship outwardly, but never inwardly. He goes on to quote uh, Muhammad's companion Abu Darda, who said, we smile in the face of some people, although our hearts curse them. So if Muslims are in an area where they're outnumbered, they're supposed to have two faces. Inwardly, they're supposed to hate the unbelievers and to long for the day when Islam will dominate. Outwardly, they are allowed to pretend to be peaceful and tolerant and kind and loving, smiling in our faces while cursing us in their hearts.
What's my point, you ask? Well, the Muslims who want to construct a massive mosque here assure us that they're doing it to honor the victims of 9-11 and not to construct a symbol of Islamic supremacy. They assure us that they're going to build a beacon of understanding and harmony, a place for people of all faiths to gather and condemn extremism. Do you believe that? If so, I'd like to sell you a bottle of Wood's Miracle Magic Cure-All from the Miracle Springs of Poland for the low, low price of $487. My friends, what did Muslims do when they conquered Mecca? They went to the Kaaba, the center of pagan worship, and they claimed it for Islam. What did Muslims do when they took Jerusalem? Where did they build their mosque? They built it on the Temple Mount. When Muslims conquered Damascus, where did they build their mosque? They demolished the Church of St. John the Baptist and replaced it with a mosque. Why? When you Islamize the most important places of your enemy, you destabilize your enemy, you make them weaker, and you show them that Muslims are in control. Now, the mosque that's being built here. We don't have a religious center in the United States of America, but we do have an economic center. The heart of that economic center was the World Trade Center, which was destroyed by Muslims. And now Muslims want to construct a massive mosque. Why? To honor the victims of 9-11? Keep in mind, this was in the minds of Muslims all along. Right after the September 11th attacks, Muslims were joking about filling the city with mosques. And now they tell us that they're doing it to honor the victims of 9-11. Smiling in our faces while cursing us in their hearts. Come out of the cave, America. It's dark in there.